A massive project is being built in one of the driest and most troubled countries in the world, Afghanistan. This project is called the Kosh Tepa Canal. I bet you've never heard of it, and this video will tell you everything. Located right on the dry plains of northern Afghanistan, trust me, this is not just another irrigation project. It's a massive creation of a 300-kilometer-long artificial river that will bring water from the AMU Darya, one of the longest rivers in Asia. Sounds awesome, right? Well, it is, but it is also very hard and risky. Can Afghanistan, despite enduring a turbulent history marred by conflict, violence, and poverty over the last half century, manage to execute a transformative initiative? Let's dive in and find out. Afghanistan has a lot of problems, but it is also working on a big project by itself, without any help from other countries or experts. The Kush Tipa Canal is going to be one of the biggest and best irrigation canals in the world, and it shows how determined the country is. It is like a big water pipe that goes for 185 kilometers, and it is very wide and deep. It starts from the Aimudario River, which is in the province of Baal, and it goes through the Jiaozian and Faria provinces. They have already finished half of the canal, and they are working fast to finish the rest because they need more water and food for their people. Some of the countries that share the Aimudario River with Afghanistan are worried that the canal will take away some of their water. However, Afghanistan asserts that it deserves a share of the water since it had none before. The region of northern Afghanistan is currently experiencing desertification, which is why a large water pipe is being constructed to transport water from a nearby river to the dry lands. This ambitious project aims to provide water, sustenance, and optimism to the millions of people residing in the area, as well as assist thousands of farmers in growing their crops. The initiative will convert 55,000 hectares of barren land into fertile fields, enabling the cultivation of grains and wheat. The ultimate goal is for Afghanistan to become a prominent wheat exporter by the year 2028. The project kicked off in March 2022 and has three steps. The first two steps were about digging the canal, and the third step was about making water irrigation systems and other stuff. The project is run by the Afghan National Development Corporation, and it is paid for by the government's taxes. They thought the project would cost $500 million, but they might need another $100 million. But how on earth did they manage that? I mean, we're talking about a country with not-so-fancy gear, not too many experienced engineers, and zilch help from outside. Now, you might have heard some gossip from Asian media saying, hey, they messed up big time. They're pointing fingers at supposed blunders, laziness, and shoddy engineering. But hold up, it turns out that the Afghan government didn't just stumble into this project blindly. They did their homework with super detailed land checks and dirt tests. This wasn't some random attempt. It was like a well thought out masterpiece. Their main goal? Keep those costs low and make sure winter floods don't ruin the party by avoiding tricky water lifting stuff. They got all smart about the route too. The canal's path was like a precisely drawn line on a map. You know, they made sure it ran at the same height as this Amu Dario River's start zone. And they weren't just throwing darts on a map, they picked a route that hit the sweet spot. Afghanistan took this huge construction project and split it into 114 parts each handled by different private crews. They started with a stretch of 108 kilometers in the beginning and had a crew of about 7,000 people working on it, driving trucks, digging with big machines, and making sure everything was on track. They also had these smart engineers guiding the whole show. They kicked things off by setting up cool gates that could stop flooding when the AMU Daria River got rowdy in winter and even built bridges that cars and trucks could use, making it all super accessible. The first part they finished was close to the river so they could let water flow into the canal. Now some people weren't too sure about using concrete slabs, but the river didn't seem to mind, and everything flowed smoothly. They didn't stop there. They linked up pipes for watering crops and put in water pipes connected to pumps in nearby towns and villages. The huge piles of dirt were moved every single day, quite a feat considering how tricky the land was. People got jobs, they planted more trees, and they spruced up the whole infrastructure scene. They're also all about solar power, sticking up those shiny panels to power up homes, workshops, and even the watering systems for new farms. 
Now you might wonder if they can actually pull this off, especially with the whole Taliban situation going on. It's not just about building stuff, it's also about making sure the country is run well and getting along with other countries. But let me tell you, if this canal thing is any clue, Afghanistan knows how to face tough times head on. They're aiming to finish this canal even earlier than they first thought, maybe by 2025. They're even building more bridges and cool tunnel things. And with all that solar power action, they're taking a big step towards making their own energy, which is pretty darn cool. When this canal is up and running, it'll be like a new chapter for Afghanistan. It could spark more cool projects that help the country get back on its feet after dealing with tons of tough stuff for years. So there you have it. Afghanistan is showing the world that no matter what, they're all about progress and bouncing back. It's a pretty inspiring tale of getting things done against all odds.